Indians. The ship was captured by Iran after a recent bout of escalation between Israel and Iran after top military generals were killed in an alleged Israeli strike on the Iranian embassy in Syria, following which Iran had vowed a revenge. Sources say Indian authorities are in touch with Iran to ensure the security and release of all 17 Indian nationals part of the crew. This bout of escalation was followed by a massive drone attack launched by Iran over Israel last night, which has quickly escalated the security situation in the Middle East. Agency Report, Republic TV now, viewers, the Iraqi Prime Minister is on a U.S. visit where he is, in fact, expected to meet with the U.S. President Joe Biden as well. And the relationship between Iraq and U.S. had always been delicate from the very beginning of this escalation that had taken place. Now, we are ex looking at the developments as with the U.S. expecting Iraq to do more than just cover their military bases as well. Let's take a look at this report to understand as far as the geopolitical situation is concerned and how it is escalated. Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammad Shia Al Sudani is all set to meet US President Joe Biden in Washington tomorrow. The visit of the Iraqi Prime Minister comes amidst talks of a formal wind down of missions led by the US led coalition created to fight the Islamic State group in Iraq. Both leaders are set to discuss on a range of issues, including fight against the Islamic State and economic development of Iraq, said the Iraqi Prime Minister. The U.S. and Iraq have began formal talks since January about ending the coalition of some 200 U.S. troops remaining in Iraq under an agreement that helped the Iraqi government fight the Islamic State. Ties between the two nations have been delicate since 2022, where a coalition of Iran-backed groups brought al-Sudani to power in Iraq. In recent months, U.S. had urged Iraq to do more to prevent attacks on U.S. bases in Syria and Iraq that have increased since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. However, Iraq has been adamant on U.S. withdrawal. أو على مستوى ظروف المنطقة وما يحصل في الأراضي الفلسطينية من جرائم قتل واستهداف للمدنيين الأبرياء من النساء والأطفال. The visit coincidentally comes as tensions between Iran and Israel are at an all-time high. Agency report, Republic TV. Time now, viewers, for some news in brief. Thousands of protesters gathered at Tel Aviv last night to rally against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government. The protesters demanded Netanyahu's resignation and release of the hostages who were taken by Hamas militants in October, 20, October 7th. The government's inability to free the hostages have exposed renewed divisions in Israeli society and the protesters carrying Israeli flag and posters demanded immediate release of the Israeli hostages. The Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammad Shia Al Sudani left. Baghdad and headed to the United States to meet with President Joe Biden in Washington on April 15th. The visit comes as the countries hold formal talks about winding down the mission of a US-led military coalition. 
The coalition was formed to fight the Islamic State group in Iraq and Iraqi Prime Minister said that these important dialogues aim to reach a time schedule to end the mission of the international coalition. Both the meetings, both the leaders in fact will consult on a range of issues including the fight against Islamic State and ongoing Iraqi financial reforms to promote economic development and progress towards Iraq's financial independence and modernization. A top-ranking official from China, in fact, reaffirmed ties with North Korea during a meeting with the country's leader Kim Jong-un. The meeting of China and North Korea is said to be the highest level talks between the allies in years. China and North Korea are looking forward to developing ties in terms of economic aid and diplomatic support but made no mention of the political situation on the peninsula or the region. North Korea and China are expected to hold a number of exchanges this year to mark the anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic ties. At least 10 people, including children, died after shelling struck a Russian-occupied town in Ukraine's southern region. A local Kremlin installed official blamed Ukraine for shelling that killed 10 people, including children. The Tokmak Municipal Administration reported that the shelling struck three apartment blocks from where five people were pulled alive from the rubble and 13 people were hospitalized. Russian emergency services continue to look for civilians trapped under the ruins of their homes in Tokmak. Pakistani police are searching for gunmen who killed eight people after abducting them from a bus on a highway in the country's southwest. The same attackers killed two people and wounded six in another car that they had forced to stop. According to the Pakistan police, the abduction took place on 12th of April in Baluchistan province, which has long been the scene of an insurgency by separatists. Fighting for independence, police had stated that there was no ransom demanded and no indication of a motive for the attack. More than 40 people remain stranded in cable cars high above a mountain in southern Turkey. 19 hours after one pod hit a pole and burst open, killing one person and injuring seven. Operations to rescue the stranded people continued throughout the night and a total of 543 first responders and seven helicopters are involved in the rescue operations as well, including teams from the AFAD, the Coast Guard, the firefighting teams and also other officials. Pittsburgh officials said that more than two dozen river barges broke loose from their moorings and floated down the Ohio River, damaging a marina and striking a bridge. The bridge had been closed preemptively and will require an inspection before the reopening of it. Three of the barges were empty and 23 carried cargo such as coal and one carried fertilizer. Though there were no hazardous materials on board, one barge containing coal still has not been found. Now, viewers, uh, shifting our focus now to some uh, international news from Asia, where we are looking at uh, particularly North Korea, where uh, a high-ranking member of the Chinese Communist Party had met uh, with the North Korean uh, officials as well at the capital. And uh, they had also met with the North Korean leader. China and North Korea, of course, uh, share ties. And they were also celebrating the anniversary of those uh, diplomatic ties as well. Let's take a look at this report to understand how those festivities went. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met a top-ranking Chinese official in the country's capital of Pyongyang to hold high-level talks. This is one of the highest-level talks between China and North Korea to take place in many years. The visit by Zhao Leiji, who is the third highest-ranked member in the Chinese Communist Party, comes after North Korea test-fired missiles in an attempt to intimidate South Korea. 
North Korea and China are expected to hold a number of exchanges this year to mark the anniversary of the establishment of their diplomatic ties. The Chinese official was quoted saying that since the establishment of ties between China and North Korea, the two nations have been good neighbors and have struggled together to attain a common destiny. Zhao's visit to North Korea marked the first bilateral exchange involving Chinese Politburo Standing Committee member since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. In recent times, North Korea has attempted to strengthen its ties with China and Russia since its standoff with US and South Korea over its missile launches and nuclear program. The meet with the Chinese top official comes after Kim's visit to Russia last September, where he held a summit with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Agency Report, Republic TV. I'm now here for a short break, viewers. On the other side, we get you details of the U.S. pledging support to Israel. Biden dials Netanyahu over response action to Iran's strike. Israel calls for emergency meet of the UNSC, demands Iran's revolutionary guards to be declared terror outfit. QSMTHE, the world's foremost university rankings organizations, have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally, making it among the very few Indian universities to be included in both rankings. Yet another top ranking for Amity University. In just a decade, India has transformed into a digital powerhouse. From classrooms to clinics, Farms to finance. Digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of life. To celebrate the makers and shakers behind Digital India and India's phenomenal Digital Yatra, Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Award. Terror hideouts bust open. Faces of terror face crackdown by forces. Ahead of the upcoming Lok Sabha elections, the security forces in JNK are carrying out a full-scale anti-terror operation. In the latest massive crackdown by the JNK police in Kishtawar district, more terrorists were apprehended. Terrorists and their associates were taken into custody by the security forces. Over a dozen surrendered terrorists, terror associates and individuals with histories linked to terrorism were detained by JNK police ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. A massive crackdown has been launched by the Kistwar police in the upper areas of the Bonjwa and the nearby the sales on the terrorist and their sympathizers that are active in the area. Early today morning, multiple teams of the Kistwar police carried out searches at the residences of the surrendered terrorists as well as the overground workers and the history sheeters that are involved in the terror crimes. The teams that were led by the SSP Abdul Kayyum raided multiple houses and over a dozen of Welcome back viewers, we are keeping you ahead on the tensions escalating in the Middle East where we had just seen a few hours ago how the drone strikes had taken place and now uh, in fact 50 drones that uh, had been lodged at Israel uh, and we are looking at the statements that are also being released by the uh, Prime Minister himself Benjamin Netanyahu and also how there have been several escalations and developments as far as the geopolitical situation around it is also concerned. Let's take a look at this report to understand how essentially the situation is escalating there in the Middle East. וביתר סט בשבועות האחרונים, ישראל נערכת לאפשרות של תקיפה ישירה מאיראן. מערכות ההגנה שלנו פרוסות. אנחנו ערוכים לכל תרחיש, הן בהגנה, 
והן בהתקפה. מדינת ישראל חזקה, צה"ל חזק, הציבור חזק. אנחנו מעריכים את ההתייצבות של ארה״ב לצידה של ישראל וכן את התמיכה של בריטניה, צרפת ומדינות רבות אחרות. קבעתי עיקרון ברור, מי שפוגע בנו, אנחנו פוגעים בו. אנחנו נגן על עצמנו מול כל איום ונעשה זאת בקור רוח ובנחישות. אני יודע שגם אתם אזרחי ישראל שומרים על קור רוח. אני קורא לכם לשמוע להנחיות פיקוד העורף. יחד נעמוד ובעזרת השם, יחד נתגבר על כל אויבינו. לפני שעה קלה, איראן שיגרה משטחה עשרות טילי קרקע-קרקע לעבר שטח מדינת ישראל. הרוב המכריע של הטילים יורטו מחוץ לגבולות מדינת ישראל על ידי מערכות ההגנה האווירית שלנו. מספר טילים בודדים נפלו בשטחנו בשלב זה אנחנו מכירים ילדה אחת שנפגעה ופגיעה בבסיס צה"ל בדרום עם נזק קל לתשתית בלבד. בנוסף, מטוסי חיל האוויר ירטו יותר מעשרה טילי שיוט מחוץ לגבולות המדינה. כמו כן, יורטו עשרות כלי טיס בלתי מאוישים מחוץ לגבולות מדינת ישראל, כאשר סך הכל, בסך הכל, כל האיומים שוגרו מעל ל-200. צה"ל עושה ויעשה. כל מה שנדרש על מנת להגן על ביטחון אזרחי מדינת ישראל. I'm now here for a short break, viewers. On the other side, we get you details of how the BJP is releasing the Sankalp Patra today. UCC One Nation One Poll to feature in BJP's poll manifesto. And the Prime Minister all set to hold a rally in Bhopal to also campaign with the former Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy in Karnataka. In just a decade, India has transformed into a digital powerhouse. From classrooms to clinics, farms to finance, digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of life. celebrate the makers and shakers behind Digital India and India's phenomenal Digital Yatra. Republic Business is delighted to bring its inaugural Republic Business Emerging Tech Award. As the political scenario evolves ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha elections, Difu prepares for another fiery contest. Difu constituency holds strategic importance in the social, economic and geopolitical landscape of the region. This time, the Congress has nominated Joy Ram Engleng, a prominent local figure, as the candidate for the upcoming elections. In contrast, the Bharatiya Janata Party has nominated Amar Singh as its candidate for the Difu Lok Sabha constituency. Difu in Assam is one of the largest constituency in terms of geographical area and encompassing 8.90 lakh voters. The constituency has undergone significant transformation in the last 5 years. Bureau report Republic TV. Good evening and welcome viewers. The BJP says that the fact that the bombers behind the Bengaluru blast in the Rameshwaram cafe were the fact that they were found in Bengal today. proves that Bengal under Mamata Banerjee is a safe haven for terrorists. Big charge to make and that might not be entirely correct. But will Mamata Banerjee be bold enough to accept that Islamist terrorism, that Islamist terrorism is a threat to the entire world and to India? Would Secular artists like Mamata Banerjee and the Vadra Congress government in Karnataka both accept that it was a terrible mistake to downplay the Rameshwaram cafe blast as a
Good evening and welcome friends this Sunday morning looks like a good morning is still though a little tense given the retaliatory strikes carried out by Iran on Israel in response to Israel hitting their embassy compound in Syria but what is important is that as of now reports suggest that while Iran has succeeded in breaching Israeli air and defense and reach some of the military targets they wanted to hit it does not seem to be going an escalatory metric so whether we are already looking at a world war 3 situation with a war already on for the us two years in europe and uh, in middle east uh, things really hotting up it will depend on whether israel responds and in what manner and uh, if it does what kind of response comes in from both the regional parts there in the middle east as also of course the united states and the larger west we are keeping close track of those developments but another important one today which is the pjp the ruling dispensation in delhi as of now is releasing its manifesto the sankal patra we have seen the congress party releasing its manifesto earlier we have seen the communist parties releasing their manifestos we have seen regional parties like the dmk making a bit of news there with uh, some comments coming in their manifesto about how the federal structure of india should be and now led by prime minister narendra modi the bjp is all set to release what it calls the sankal path remember it comes uh, on the back of two terms uh, in which prime minister modi has been at the helm and uh, they have made those promises in 2014 and 19 and delivered it would be interesting to see how the party takes it forward remember the stump speeches by prime minister modi over the last one month have been talking about a lot that remains to be done despite the fact that there is a legacy already of uh, promises delivered over the last 10 dk 10 years uh, including of course uh, the important ones uh, like the ram temple and uh, abrogation of article 370 and part rollout of the uniform civil code the three important promises that had been on bjp manifestos since 1980 when the party was set up and in fact even before when the party was existing in its uh, jansang avatar so let's uh, get you all the details 8 30 is the time when prime minister is all set to be at the bjp headquarters uh, in new delhi and that's when the announcement would be made in the presence of uh, the entire leadership of the BJP, we'll get you those pictures. We are going to go to reporters live also. Let me get you the headlines at this hour. BJP to release Sankal Pat today. UCC One Nation One Poll to feature in BJP's poll manifesto. Prime Minister to hold rally in Bhopal to also campaign with former Chief Minister H.D. Kumaraswamy in Karnataka. 17 Indians on board cargo vessel seized by Iran near Strait of Hormuz. India, Indian government in touch with Tehran. Drones, crews and ballistic missiles launched by Iran. Iran wants US to stay away. The U.S. pledges support to Israel. Biden dials Netanyahu over response action to Iran's strike. Israel calls for emergency meet of UNSC, demands Iran's revolutionary guards be declared a terror outfit. Welcome again, friends. Amid uh, mounting anticipation and speculation, the BJP is gearing up to unveil its roadmap for India's future, with the nation eagerly awaiting the unveiling of the party's manifesto for the 2024 general elections. All eyes on the party's promises and priorities for the country's development. But before 2024 manifesto, let's get you a recap of what the party promised in 2014 and 19 so you get an understanding of how 2024 would be different from the last two manifestos of the modi government have a look in just a short while from now 
the Prime Minister will release his party's manifesto for 2024 Lok Sabha polls. As the clock ticks by, let's do a quick recap of BJP's manifesto of 2014 and 2019. PM Modi's 2014 election campaign was marked by a wave of promises that captured the imagination of millions. But it was two key promises that the BJP's manifesto revolved around – good governance and development. good governance. Development. From economic development to social welfare, his pledges resonated deeply with voters. One of the most notable promises was his commitment to ushering in a new era of economic growth and prosperity through initiatives like Make in India and Skill India, aiming to boost domestic manufacturing and job creation. Additionally, not just that, Prime Minister Modi also promised to tackle corruption and inefficiency in government, resonated strongly with voters tired of bureaucratic red tape. Let's turn the clock back 10 years. Here's how the manifesto looked like in 2014. In 2014, Prime Minister launched Make in India and the Swachh Bharat Mission. Mahatma Gandhi Hindustan ke har gali mohalle mein safai karne ke liye nahi gaye the lekin safai ki unki pratibaddhata ne pure Hindustan mein safai ke prati ek jagrukta paida ki thi humne sabne mil kar ke is kaam ko karna hai hum jahan ho jaise ho is kaam ko karenge mujhe vishwas hai main apni Bharat Mata ko gandagi se hum mukt kara payenge in 2015 came Prime Minister's Digital India Plan. A plan that not only is making India go cashless, but also encouraging young content creators. India's digital revolution inspired many countries, pushing them to adopt the UPI system. GST has been passed. This is expected to be implemented in 2017. In the same year, the center banned triple talaq. Dunia ke andar, jo Islamic countries hai, bahut ek Islamic countries ne triple talaq par pratiban lagaya hua hai. Isliye ye sampraday ka आस्था का मसला नहीं है इसका मतलब हुआ कि यह जेंडर इक्विलिटी का मसला बनता है सामाजिक न्याय का मसला बनता है यह धार्मिक आस्था का नहीं बनता है इन 2018 द सेंटर हेल्ड द हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम इनटू अकाउंट एंड इंट्रोड्यूस्ड द आयुष्मान भारत स्कीम इन एन अटेम्प्ट टू मेक हेल्थ केयर मोर अफोर्डेबल द बीजेपी आल्सो पुश्ड फॉर सेल्फ रिलायंस इन डिफेंस सेक्टर pushing India to manufacture indigenous defense equipment. Now, let's dive into 2019. The BJP's 2019 manifesto aimed to build a strong India, double farmers' income by 2022, provide pensions to small farmers, implement the NRC nationwide, abrogate Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir, build a Ram temple in Ayodhya, ensure national security, expand welfare schemes like PM Kisan and Ayushman Bharat, and enact the Citizenship Amendment Bill to grant citizenship to persecuted minorities. In a historic move, the same year, 2019, the Modi government revoked Article 370, removing special status of Kashmir tying it to India. Naya Anuched 303A Jo Lok Sabame Ek Tihai Matru Sakti Ka Araksan Karega Naya Anuched 
332 ए जो राज्यों की विधानसभा में एक तिहाई मातृशक्ति का आरक्षण करेगा और इसके साथ साथ एससी और एसटी वर्ग के लिए जितनी भी सीटें रिजर्व है उसमें भी एक तिहाई सीटें मातृशक्ति के लिए आरक्षित हो जाएगी मान्य अध्यक्ष जी इसके साथ महिलाओं के अधिकार की एक लंबी लड़ाई का अंत हो जाएगा वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट पोल प्रोमिस बाई प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी ही फुलफिल्ड द बीजेपी प्रोमिस बाय ओवर सींग द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ राम मंदिर इन अयोध्या a significant step in fulfilling a long standing commitment a significant step in fulfilling a long standing commitment to hindu nationalism and cultural identity with so many promises fulfilled the prime minister says picture abhi baki hai aajkal badi badi hotel mein koi khana khane jata hai na तो शुरू में थाली आने से पहले एपेटाइजर आता है बड़ी चटार के दार वानगियां आती हैं कभी कभी लगता है यार इसी से तो पेट भर गया लेकिन आपको मालूम है वो एपेटाइजर होता है थाली आनी बाकी है ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी All right that was what the BJP promised in 2014 and 19 in a bit we'll come to what the BJP has delivered from those promises but let's give you a sense of what's really happening on the ground Riyanka is joining us live from outside BJP headquarters things must be building up there leaders coming in and let's try to understand Riyanka if you're there please tell us which and of course we have other reporters Gursimran live from Jammu Zeenat from Srinagar Prajul from Bengaluru and Ashwin from Chennai will go to them in a bit but to Riyanka first Riyanka you're there at the BJP headquarters uh, who all have arrived can you tell us how long before we have other leaders including the prime minister arriving what time is the press conference to start for the BJP to announce its manifesto That's right. Uh, we are present here inside the BJP headquarters, and the leaders have started to arrive. We are also getting to know that Prime Minister Modi is going to come into uh, the premises in any time from now. Well, the event is scheduled to take place at around 8:30, but we are seeing movement here. As you can see, there are massive posters that have been laid down behind my background uh, because all of this are the promises that have been made and fulfilled by Prime Minister Modi. We are going to see uh, all the dignitaries come in here because uh, the man. manifesto the sankalp patra of the bjp for the lok sabha 2024 is going to be launched today prime minister modi along with senior functionaries jp nadda home minister amit shah rajnath singh all are going to come in here and uh, we are showing you the visuals as of now uh, if we talk about the focus this time uh, well it is going to be on the upliftment of youth women poor and the farmers so these are going to be the focal point here uh, as you could see from the visuals behind me are all the work that has been done by the bjp government in the last 10 years and coming uh, what we are going to see forward they will put a significant focus on developed india by 2047 so several measures several ideas are going to be put forward that is going to be expected remember around 1.5 million suggestions had come in through the namo app to the bjp before they came uh, before they uh, formulated the entire manifesto the sankalp patra so uh, several uh, developments are going to take place here the movement is uh, heating up there have been massive security that has been deployed in and around the premises uh, as of now uh, we are seeing uh, several leaders joining in uh, the movement is going to be expected shortly but uh, prime minister is going to be here any time soon we will get you all the details on the ground at that minute Okay Riyanka I'll come back to you I can see a long uh, series of posters there behind you which perhaps uh, talk about uh, what the BJP has uh, promised uh, a glimpse of which we showed earlier and uh, what it has delivered uh, let's for the benefit of viewers get a capsule on the promises that were made and delivered over the last decade then I go to other reporter these are pictures live coming in of course from the press conference room of the BJP headquarters
PM Modi is seeking a historic third term to boost his efforts to make India a developed nation by 2047 on a plank that is a fusion of his personal appeal and the scorecard of fulfilled promises. Before coming to power in 2014, the BJP had made a slew of promises and now most of them are complete. बड़े गौरव के साथ बताना चाहता हूं मान्यवर 82 प्रतिशत काम मील पारित होने के पहले समाप्त कर दिया गया है और बाकी 18 प्रतिशत है वो भी एक साल में हम समाप्त जो लोग कहते हैं कब आएगा कब भाई ये कांग्रेस की सरकार नहीं है आप समझ नहीं रहे हो ये भारतीय जनता पार्टी की नरेंद्र मोदी सरकार है जो साइमिटेनियस काम करती है प्लानिंग के साथ काम करती है नतीजे पर this includes a dream that goes back centuries. Aaj hamare Ram aa gaye. Sadiyon ki pratiksha ke baad hamare Ram aa gaye. Sadiyon ka abhutpurva dhairya anginat balidan tyag aur tapasya ke baad Hamare Prabhu Ram Aagaye. The abrogation of Article 370 that gave special status to Jammu and Kashmir. Anek Pidione Ek Sambidhan Iskilie Sapna Dekhata. Lekin Harpal was Sambidhan Vek Darar Dikhai Dekiti. Egisi Sadane. धारा 360 आर्टिकल 360 हटा देंगे संविधान के पूर्ण रूप को उसके पूर्ण प्रकाश के साथ उसका प्रगति करना होगा इंट्रोड्यूसिंग द सिटीजनशिप अमेंडमेंट एक्ट मैं आज देश की जनता को बताना चाहता हूं कि यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड सिर्फ भारतीय जनता पार्टी का एजेंडा नहीं है जब से हमारी पार्टी की स्थापना हुई 1950 से तब से हम कहते हैं कि हम पावर में आएंगे तो यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड इस देश के अंदर लाएंगे अगर आप पंथ निरपेक्ष देश की कल्पना चाहते हैं पंथ निरपेक्ष राज्य की कल्पना चाहते हैं तो धर्म के आधार पर कानून कैसे हो सकता है धर्म के आधार पर कानून नहीं हो सकते इंप्लीमेंटिंग अ यूनिफॉर्म सिविल कोड and banning the practice of triple talaq among many others. लोग UCC committee सारे बीडी uh, से जुड़े हुए लोग विशेषक uh, उनके साथी लोग सभी ने बहुत लोगों के विचार लिए हैं दो लाख पैंतीस हजार से भी ज्यादा लोगों के विचार लिए हैं उनके विचार के बाद उन्होंने संकलन कर रहे हैं और वो संकलन उन्होंने पूरा किया है वो पूरा करने के बाद ड्राफ्ट बनाएंगे और वो ड्राफ्ट हमको मिलेगा Back in 2019, the PM himself laid the foundation stone for the Silla Tunnel. And now in 2014, he himself returned to Itanagar to inaugurate it. All of this has happened in 10 years, in what will go down in the annals of history as a historic tenure for the BJP. The PM Modi-led government has delivered on some of its biggest ideological commitments. The BJP's zero tolerance policy on terror is also in full display now. Teen talaq par kanun hamari muslim behno ki madad kar raha hai. Modi ne aap ki raksha to ki hai. Lekin Modi ne har muslim parivar ki bhi raksha ki hai. The Prime Minister has repeatedly said, Modi ki guarantee also means fulfilling the guarantee. Mere parivar jano, Congress sirf kaange jo mein kaam karne ka dikhava karti hai, aur Modi jameen par kaam karke jindagi badalne ke liye pratibadh rehta hai. Modi ki guarantee yani, har guarantee pura hone ki guarantee. Bajpa ki sachi guarantee ke aage, Congress ke juthe vaide kahi tik nahi paenge. The BJP is all set to release its election manifesto for the 2024 Lok Sabha polls. BJP Sankal Patra is expected to be released at 8.30 am in the presence of Prime Minister Modi. 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट रिपब्लिक टीवी well several bjp leaders have started to come in here we are expecting prime minister modi to come in at any moment but we will come back with more details and developments from the manifesto of the bjp for the lok sabha 2024 stay tuned we are coming right back after this short break QSM THE the world's foremost university rankings organizations have ranked Amity amongst the top 3% universities globally making it among the very few indian universities to be included in both rankings yet another top ranking for amity university in just a decade india has transformed into a digital powerhouse from classrooms to clinics farms to finance digitalization is revolutionizing every aspect of life to celebrate the makers and shakers behind digital india and india's phenomenal digital yatra republic business is delighted to bring its inaugural republic business emerging tech award the city of nizams is excited to witness one of the biggest political clashes it's bjp versus aimim in hyderabad bjp's madhvi lata a bjp debutant is up against aimim chief asaduddin owaisi a four time mp the battle this time is that of ideologies a prominent hindutva figure she has actively campaigned against regressive practices such as triple talaq and fought for the rights of muslim women this is something that owaisi has time and again challenged when the triple talaq was scrapped in 2019 owaisi opposed the center's move that is not all owaisi also questioned the citizenship amendment act bjp ne cwa ka unconstitutional kanun banaya और रिलीजन की बुनियाद पर बनाया गया है जो राइट टू इक्वालिटी के खिलाफ है और इसीलिए मैंने उस कानून के बिल को पार्लियामेंट में फाड़ा था और हम आ, उस वक्त भी खिलाफ थे आज भी और कल भी रहेंगे माधवी लता स्लैम हिम ओवर हिज व्यूज फर्स्ट असदुद्दीन जी नीड्स टू एक्सप्लेन वॉट इज सी एकॉर्डिंग टू हिम इज and what caa according to the existing central government definition unfortunately every time asad ji wanted to manipulate the law the acts and whatever the central party if it is non congress as the battle for polls gets exciting will it be a five time win for asaduddin owaisi or will the lotus bloom in the city of polls Bureau Report Republic TV Most popular cafes in Bengaluru on the 1st of March India's top anti-terror agency NIA was roped in to lead the hunt for the terrorists who had orchestrated the attack And now within 45 days the agency has busted the vicious ISIS terror nexus and the terror All right, welcome back. Uh, before we get you the BJP manifesto, which of course is going to be launched in about ten minutes from now. The official time was eight thirty p.m. We are already hitting eight twenty-five. But also, let's try to get a flavor of the anticipation on the ground. We earlier had a reporter giving uh, you details from the BJP headquarters. We also have reporters joining us live from Jammu, Bengaluru, and let me go to Chennai first, down south. Ashwin, uh, Chennai has been uh, an area of extra focus by the bjp led by the prime minister himself uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, fort william so to say which needs to be uh, uh, you know conquered by the bjp as the bjp says that that is one area which has uh, sort of eluded them as also kerala you come from kerala 
give us a sense of what's really happening there on the ground. You have been there for a few days uh, across Tamil Nadu. Ashwin, uh, is BJP making any inroads this time with the kind of uh, aggressive push that has come from the Prime Minister himself? Oh, well, Abhishek, uh, recently Prime Minister had shared a video which said that 24-7 for 2047 and which is essentially the spirit with which what BJP workers are working in the state of Tamil Nadu as well as I can say very clearly in Kerala because uh, what they are saying is that they will relentlessly keep working and hitting it till the mountains move. That is what the entire policy is. That is what several leaders from the BJP have been saying. Of course, there have been a high decibel campaigning that has been going on in, in, since 1967. No national party 